Meghan Markle had difficulty adapting to the monarchy because she did not subsume herself in royal family life unlike Kate, the Duchess of Cambridge, according to the CEO of Republic. Meghan and Kate, Duchess of Cambridge, first met in early 2017 at Kensington Palace, just over a year before Meghan and Prince Harry tied the knot at Windsor Castle. It did not take long before rumours of a chasm opening up between the sisters-in-law began to hit the headlines. However, Graham Smith, CEO of anti-monarchy campaign group Republic, claimed that the Sussexes' dramatic departure from the firm was not solely down to the sister-in-law rift, but to the monarchy's inability to adapt. He told that, it shows that they struggle to accept anybody into the family from outside, unless they are willing as Kate has been, to completely subsume themselves to pre-existing ways of behaving. He claimed the Sussexes' new way of operating, away from the confines of the royal households, showed the royal family to be dysfunctional and incapable of being flexible or changing. Meghan and Harry stepped back from official duties in March 2020, relocating to Meghan's home state of California in the U.S. They are now not permitted to use their former HRH titles, but do retain their titles of Duke and Duchess of Sussex. On the Royal Rift, Tom Quinn, the author of Kensington Palace, an intimate memoir said, Meghan and Kate initially got on very well but they are very, very different. He compared the approaches and personalities of the two duchesses, pointing out the differences that could have sparked animosity. Kate wants to do things quietly, she wants to obey the rules, she takes advice, Meghan is a much more strident character who wanted to do things her way, so this caused a rift. The Sussexes moved out of the accommodation they shared with the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge in Kensington Palace by the end of 2018. Rumours then emerged about Meghan allegedly making Kate cry in an argument over dresses for the royal wedding. Meghan addressed the claims in her now infamous Oprah Winfrey interview, saying the opposite was true and it was the Duchess of Sussex who had broken down in tears. She said, the issue was correct about flower girl dresses, and it made me cry and it really hurt my feelings. I thought in the context of everything else that was going on in those days leading to the wedding that it didn't make sense to not be just doing what everyone else was doing, which was try to be supportive, knowing what was going on with my dad and what not. She added that she didn't think it's fair to dig into the details of the spat, but that she maintained her opinion of Kate as a good person. In the interview, Harry claimed that Prince William and Charles were trapped within the system, and Meghan described how she struggled so much with her new life within the firm that she didn't want to be alive anymore. Mr. Smith said, a lot of what Meghan and Harry said in that interview last year rang true for an awful lot of people. He added that it made the monarchy look shabby, inflexible and secretive and incapable of living by the standards of 2022. Last year, Royal expert Emily Andrew suggested that Meghan had hoped to be welcomed with open arms by her sister-in-law, who would sympathize and understand the process of slotting in among senior royals. Speaking during Channel 5's documentary, Meghan at 40, Ms. Andrew claimed, here were two women, both outsiders, marrying into the royal family, living on the same complex at Kensington Palace, of course, they'd be besties. She continued on to say that this was likely Meghan's expectation, to have a confidant who knew the challenges she was facing and offer advice to power through the difficulties. She said, actually, that's what Meghan felt. She confided in a number of her friends that she hoped Kate would help her adjust to royal life, but the cracks started to show pretty early on. Behind the scenes, Meghan was feeling a bit rebuffed. I'm not sure whether Kate ever realized. Meghan Markle may never get a royal crown, but she has been crowned the worst influential royal.